All right, what I want to do is I want to show you examples of transformations with exponential functions. So remember, an exponential function is whenever we have a function, or a to the x equals a to the x, where we have x is any number greater than 0, it cannot equal 1, and x represents any real number. So here we have, we set, have a set of four, uh, express four functions and then I have a transformation from the function from the original pair function and what you notice is these all have a different um, these all have a different base here the base is three four three fifths and two and the reason why I just kind of showed you different bases is it's not going to really affect as much as far as your transformation you're still gonna have essentially pretty much the same graph they are going to alter a little bit but a couple things will always remain the same your y-intercept is always going to be equal to 1, or what we write as a point 0, 1. And that's kind of important because our graph is going to look something like this, where it's always going to cross at 0, 1. And the why is that? Well, because if I make 0, if I do 3 raised to the 0, 4 raised to the 0, 3 fifths raised to the 0, or 2 raised to the 0, it doesn't matter. Whatever I raise to the 0 power, it's always going to give me 1. So therefore, that's why even these graphs will be different the parent graph, it's always going to kind of be the same. So let's talk about a little bit what the transformation is. The first one, what I have is I have a transformation of a minus 4 and it's inside of the function. So whenever I'm dealing with any kind of transformation and I'm changing, I'm at, plus, adding or subtracting inside the function, that's going to shift the graph left or right. Since I'm subtracting a 4, I'm going to shift the graph four units to the right, all right? Now, a lot of students always think negative, oh, it has to be to the left. It's actually going to be the opposite when you're dealing with inside of the function. Um, here, I'm adding a one, and it's outside of the function. Actually, I should probably put this in parentheses. Here, I'm adding this one, it's outside of the function. See, remember, an exponential function is a to the x. So I have something already in that form. So when I'm adding a 1, that means it's outside of the function. So what that's going to do is that's going to shift my graph one unit up. And if it was negative, that means I'd shift it one unit down. Over here, I now have a negative, um, I now have a, uh, a negative sign. So what is my negative sign going to do? Well, again, I have my a to my x, right? And then I'm making a negative sign in, uh, I'm making that negative to my a to the x. So therefore, whenever you make a negative a to the x like that, that is going to shift your graph about the x-axis. I'm sorry, not shift, but reflect about the x-axis. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect my x-axis. All right, and then I'm going to shift four units left. Very similar to this one, but since now I'm adding, I'm going to shift it four units to the left. And let's make this a negative, actually. Here, I have my a to my x, but instead I have a negative x. So when I have a negative x, I'm not going to reflect the x-axis, I'm going to reflect the y-axis. And the best way I like to re remember this is if you guys like have a point Let's say I had a point negative 2 comma 1, right? Where that's an x and that's a y. Well, if I was about to say, well, what's negative x comma y, then it'd be positive 2, 1, right? So that'd be over here, positive 2 over 1. So if I have an x and I make the negative x, what am I reflecting? I'm reflecting about the y-axis. That's how I always remember that. So here is reflect the y-axis. And also, I have to reflect the x-axis as well. So I'm reflecting about the y-axis, the x-axis, and since that's a negative 3, I'm shifting 3 units down. Okay? And since I have a little bit of board space, let me just show you what reflections kind of look like. If here's my parent graph, it has to cross at 0, 1. Okay? If I'm going to reflect... If 
But here's my parent graph. Again, I'll just do three of these. Okay, these all cross at 0, 1. If I'm going to reflect about the x-axis, it's going to be the exact same thing, but it's going to be reflected down this way. So it looked like that. And if I was about to reflect about the y-axis, be the exact same thing, but it's just going to go the other direction. Okay? So that is a reflect my y-axis, and this is a reflection of my x-axis. And this is what we call our parent graph. And there you go. That's how you do transformations with an exponential function.